Hi folks, this is Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. Today we're going to talk about these cattle panels for garden tunnels and garden archways. It is one very effective method of going with vertical gardening and in our little garden here space is a premium. So we've devised many different ways to grow up and take advantage of what little sunlight we have here. Yeah, and we have a lot of experimental gardening going on as a result because, as you can see, we have woods all around us. So, let's get into it. We started with these cattle panels procured from Tractor Supply. They're 56 inches by 16 feet. A little hard to haul, but we managed to get them here. This actual one is uh, its a combination of two tunnels and we start with finding a way of anchoring them at the end and then we sort of torque them so they're in a curved Okay, can you show me the end shape. anchor? Yeah, um, you're going to have to get on to the side. This is anchored to a timber. You can see the timber running through here and you can use um, strapping and or, bricks, just so you've got it into a brick. And bricks, and on this side, you can see where we've put the end up against concrete blocks, heavy duty 12 inchers that are, are filled, and that's the instance on the other little one next to here, too. Um, you could also use T-posts like we have right here. These are our, um, the tubes are our drip irrigation tubing. You can use these T-posts driven into the ground and anchored here. By the way, if you see, we really love zip ties. And if you go to using zip ties, which we, we've used for uh, essentially linking two panels together, these ties need to be UV resistant. They also need to be heavy duty enough that they'll hold up. So UV resistant and heavy duty. Don't want them cutting loose and causing a calamity here. Now this is a raised bed system here. We just went in and kind of shifted the soil and went on top with some mulch and we're using a single line drip irrigation system on all of these, in fact. And what we're growing on the right here is pumpkin. On the left here is variety of squash, both winter and summer. And then on the back, we are growing beans. You can use these arches, these cattle panel garden arches cattle panel tunnels, whichever you prefer, they form a bower and it's wonderful. It's like you see the plant growing up and it's particularly when it starts to complete a whole circle of growing up and then down. And yeah, they do need some help. Uh, sometimes we have to take a, a tie and just sort of guide it because it want, they want to kind of grow straight up. So we have to kind of bend them down or weave them through the little squares there. And so you're just using, for the ties, you're just using? Yeah, your typical plastic, stretchy tomato ties. Okay. All right, um, let's walk over here and we can show off the, uh, this is a straw bale cattle panel tunnel garden. And here we have um, condition bales. It's a beautiful place to sit on a hot day because it throws down a lot of shade. You can, one other advantage, we have in previous articles talked about squash bugs and vine borers and such. You can spot the squash bug eggs very easily from this position because mm. most of them are laid underside the leaf. And so um, it's pretty darn easy to get up there, spot the squash eggs and take a sharp implement scissors, knife, and just carve out that section and uh, dispose of those eggs. Uh, any other thing to, to add to here? Any questions, Leora? Um, let's see. I 
don't think so. You're also supporting, how are you, is the squash being supported up above? Good question. On its own, this this will grow. This is a um, green stripe kushal. It will grow really big. So it's easy enough to take uh, like some sort of netting and make a little hammock mm -hmm. for it. It looks nicer when it's not there, uh, but. But do you need it? You, it can sometimes grow? you do. Sometimes you really do. Plus these things are gonna grow down to he here and I've already conked my head on this one time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, particularly when you have a- The hummingbird hat. feeder. Uh, oh, we've had somebody write in from, uh, I think it was Wyoming, somewhere like that, saying, what about wind? Well, as long as you anchor effectively, see the wind will just kind of blow over a curve. Whereas if it's a flat surface like that, it's gonna hit it direct. The wind tends to uh, not be as much of an effect on these things. That's uh, that's pretty much all I had to say about garden. Okay, tunnels. so you um, brought them in, and then you, how did you bend it over? You anchored it on one side, and then you bent it over. Perfect. And yeah, we we went to one side, and they're not that hard to bend. You just have to make sure you have something solid down at the bottom to bend them, and you can anchor them further with anchor stakes. Um, this right now is just pressured against the, um, the bottom of the uh, blocks, the 12 inch blocks. And this is the second year, we've not had any issues whatsoever with wind. Um, and we've left space here, obviously we need to get in through there to help maintain the outside of both archers. So, uh, you know, leave yourself some space to get out there if you're going to crowd them in like this. All right. And one other thing about cattle panels, and then we'll lead into um, another topic. <laughs> we use cattle panels too. This is essentially a um, verti vertical uh, setup here where we're going to use a Florida weave method to support these guys. Plus, you'll see later, we're going to put down our squirrel cage. We still have squirrels coming in the yard and we're going to try to foil them by putting in chicken wire at this end and the other, and then you have a drop down, sort of like a, a Roman type blind that will drop down and um, still allow light, but also prevent the little rodents from getting in there. And do you want to mention the um, covered cattle panel tunnel? Oh yeah, oh perfect, thank you. And this one here, it's like our little greenhouse shade house. We used it all winter long. We grew um, some of the coal crops. Can I come around to the other side of Yeah, you? like broccoli and other things in here. Um, right now we have the basic crop of arugula growing on the right here. We also have under the shade some little kalets. It's like Brussels sprouts and kale. Uh, combined. So you have um, the bale on one side and the ground on the other, right. the row on the other? Right. We're, th this again is, <laughs> we like to experiment like you say, so, um, but the shade cloth is great. It allows 50% shade. It is definitely anywhere from 8 degrees to uh, 10 degrees cooler under here during the hot day. We've had to roll it up because we're going to convert it over to with these squash plants on either side, we're going to convert it over to another squash archway. And as we go through the season, we'll add more plants through here, uh, probably beans. I didn't, are you saying you're going to expand the arch to include the squash beds? Yeah, that's why we have it rolled up, is so that it can allow more sunlight to come through, and then as this thing grows, we'll just peel this shade cloth back and eventually off. Okay. As the shade is thrown down by the Okay. I, again, I, we're experimenting. I thought you meant the cattle panel itself. Okay, so is there, like, this, you have about two feet of overlap of the cattle panel here. Is that because you were short on vertical space or because you needed that for the extra support? We needed space right where you're standing. Okay. Yeah, so normally, we, how much would you overlap would you recommend? Uh, yeah, one square. Okay, so one square is say. enough. Yeah, that, okay. that adds a little extra support. It's like a rib. Right. You know. Okay. All right, anything else on cattle panels? Let me see. Um, no, I think we have it all. Um, just be sure you can get these. Uh, don't don't go cheap and get the sort of roll wire, reinforcing wire, like this stuff. 
this is not this will not hold up go with the heavy duty and uh, cattle panels uh, wire will last for a very long time it's galvanized um, it's not going to rust like it, the cheaper it's not going to rust like the cheaper stuff plus you'll have this for years and years to use okay great okay so we'll do the next video will be the florida weave tomato support so we'll start a new one we're doing a florida okay. weave can't wait all right thank you so much and y'all keep it keep on gardening keep on growing we'll be in touch